<clears throat> Maybe you also read about the Newman family from Atlanta. They bought a large, dense, 10 foot tree from Home Depot, tied it on top of the family car, and drove home. Like my tree and probably your tree, it was fitted with a stand, positioned in the house, and finally strung with lights and ornaments. Curiously, Katie Newman has a penchant for owl ornaments. She collects them and she hung them on the tree. A week after the tree was installed, her 10-year-old daughter came into the kitchen to say that one of the ornaments was really creepy. <laughs> she didn't like it. Would her mother take it off the tree, please? Katie Newman went to inspect, and there, perched on her tree, was a little eastern screech owl. The real thing. <laughs> Wide-eyed, in the fir branches, gorgeously feathered and in the flesh. Right there beside the ornaments was the real thing. The real thing. It is what we come seeking. The little owl had been a stowaway. It had come from deep inside the dense tree to perch at the branch ends. After a week, it was hungry, and it had come out looking for food. Katie Newman called a local wildlife center. They said, feed it raw chicken and open a window. Katie Newman did as she was told. She opened all the windows and the doors, hoping the bird would fly through the window and return home to the wild. In the great story we remember tonight, the Holy Family is returning home also to Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem is Joseph's birthplace and the birthplace of King David. The details are important here. Jesus was not born at the center of power where the principalities of the world existed, not at Jerusalem, but in the humble village of Bethlehem. Art Wolf is a renowned nature photographer. You might have seen his photographic journals. He has several. One of them is called Migrations. Another is called The Living Wild. His work Migration captures up close groups of animals with their kind, a herd of elephants a catch of ladybugs, a bevy of swans, a what of penguins, a colony of penguins, a what of dolphins, a pod of dolphins, a what of owls, a parliament, a parliament of owls. So he's photographing all these groups of animals. His lens goes in on a few of the animals within the group. So the whole photograph is animal. It's fur or feather or fin. It's all animal. When Wolf photographed for the living wild, his camera took a different angle. He was looking at individual animals endangered animals that we might save from extinction if we care to do it. For those pictures, he used a wide angle lens because it not only captured the animal, but the animal in its surroundings. The animal in the photographs aren't separated from their environment. 
because without the environment, the animal cannot exist. He wanted us to understand that. Maybe you are here in this place because you are looking for the Christ, because after all, this is a church. It's a place you might come. And we've got some Jesus going on here for sure. <laughs> Maybe you are here because you also want to journey to Bethlehem to get past the ornaments of the season to the real thing. There are three necessities for making a proper spiritual journey. The first is that you believe there is something worth the trip. Something larger and bigger than you, a transcendence that we around here call the Christ. That's the first. The second piece is that you believe that this larger, bigger thing, the Christ, will impact your life for the encounter of it. So there is something, and that something will make a difference. That's thing one and thing two. <laughs> the third thing is the hardest thing. It's what we aren't so good at, which is actually making the trip. It's actually doing it. It's actually getting ourselves to Bethlehem. Most of us stay in Jerusalem up on the hill where there's a temple. The church has a lot of Jesus in it. But the church alone will not get you to Bethlehem. This is not to say the church is not important. I believe it is, and I would like to keep my job. <laughs> but the church is not the thing itself. Christ. At its best, the church is the map to the Christ. It points to Bethlehem. It gives us to map, a map to where the Christ is born. Then, 2,000 years ago, that was a map Christy just read. And the church also gives us a map for that today. Now. Now. The real thing born then and the real thing that needs to be born again. In Tony Hoagland's exquisite poem, Entangle, the poet writes of a vine. He regularly sees in shrubbery along Reba Street where he likes to walk. It is two vines, and they are mixed up and knotted together in a maze of leaves. He wonders that one vine doesn't strangle the other. The poet is aware that he probably could untangle the vines, but he prefers just to walk Reba Street. Not understanding what I am, writes the poet. And yet, in certain moments, remembering what I am and bursting into tears. Somewhat confused as the vine runs through me and flowers unexpectedly. The church invites you this night to make your way to Bethlehem to return home. But here's the catch. We are called to go to our own homeland. Our road does not lead to a faraway place, that Bethlehem. If this night means anything, it means that the God come to us in Jesus is not at a distance. Jesus came to point us to God, who identified as I am. God come to us in fleshed in Jesus, is in fleshed in you. That I am is your I am. You are Bethlehem. You are the environment of the Christ. 
the Christ cannot live outside of you. Remember what you are. Carl Jung called this the continuing incarnation of God. St. Kevin of Ireland went on a journey out of the monastery. He walked out and he walked to a patch of woods about 50 yards away. And there was a little hut there and he decided he would pray alone in his hut. This is in Glendalough, if you know the place. It was so small that he had to fold himself into it. Little yoga move. As the story goes, Kevin got cramped saying his prayers. So he stretched his arms out the small window of the hut, his arm. And as he sat praying with his arm out, a bird came and landed in his palm. Kevin remained very still. There was a twig in the bird's beak. Kevin remained very still. She dropped it into his palm and flew away. Kevin did not move. The bird returned with another twig. And was gone again, only to return with a bit of moss. Kevin was still in that hut, and he stayed there, his arm extended for days as the bird built her nest in the palm of his hand. And he held his place as she laid her bright eggs. And she warmed them in Kevin's palm until they hatched. And she fed them in Kevin's palm as they grew. And he held his arm extended as they flew. What you seek is seeking you, said Rumi. The bird will find you. When we study artistic renderings of the nativity, often the baby is swaddled and laying in a nest of hay, as the Bible recounts. There are artists who capture the Christ child before he is swaddled. Incarnate God in the naked infant, utterly vulnerable. Often in these images, the infant, his arms are not bound. The infant is reaching for the mother. And the mother is reaching for the child. The child needs the mother, even as the mother and all the world needs the child. We are captured in the wide angle of God. We coexist with the Christ. The Christ was material then, and the Christ remains material now, born in you. The incarnation challenges every notion that we are separate from God. Your human life is the hand for the bird of God. This holy night comes to this. The Christ event is both done to us and we are it. It happens to us and we are the happening of it. Christ took on flesh then and will take on flesh again and again and again in you. Lucky you, Katie Newman in Atlanta. You bought the real thing at the Home Depot. The rest of us have to get ourselves to Bethlehem. But the good news is that that is not very far away. Katie Newman opened up the doors and the windows in the living room. But the next day, the eastern screech owl was still there. Perched, looking out at her. 
So the people from the wildlife rescue came and they safely caged the little owl and they took it outside and the Newman children released it back to its place of origin. Fingers crossed that it would make its way back home. May it be so for that bird. May it be so for you, for me, and for all sentient beings. Amen.